Hello! It is morning now in my room that I cleaned all night last night and I've already destroyed it. So currently the uh, breakfast table is a little messy because I have to take everything off the toaster if I need to use it. So, oh, what are we going to talk about today? Let's see. Well, I suppose I'll introduce my animal of the day, which you may be able to see if you have really good eyes, but if not, it's the palace cat. So, uh, when we went to Ueno Zoo in Tokyo, they had a couple of palace cats there, and I was so excited, because I always wanted to see one in real life. Uh, if you don't know what a palace cat is, it's a very small wild cat, very poofy fur, because it usually lives in the mountains, has very small round ears, and is the only cat species to have a round pupil, just like humans do, instead of a slit that you would normally see with things such as house cats. So that's my animal of the day! Yay! <laughs> I had to do it. I studied zoology. What do you expect? But anyway, so uh, as many of you, many of may of you, as many of you may or may not know, the reason I am living in Japan is because. I was accepted into the JET program, so teaching English in Japan. So I figured everyone else is doing it, why not jump on the bandwagon? Again, a little late. I'm always, I'm always really slow to get into these things. But anyway, uh, a lot of you right now will be waiting on your applications. I'm not sure if you will have been shortlisted yet. I feel like it was around January, February, but we'll start off with the interviews that you should be going to sometime soon, at least for New Zealand anyway. So in your interviews, don't freak out. I know that's really obvious, but just be yourself, relax, uh, don't be afraid to gloat if you have any special skills or you think there's something that will help you in your acceptance. <laughs> uh, so when I went for my interview, I was super nervous. I I think I had originally asked to be put in elementary school. So I am quite into crochet and stuff, which you could probably see there's a wee crocheted mud kit right here on my TV. I brought one of my crocheting things with me to the interview and it wasn't until the end and they asked me is there anything else that you think would make you good for this program like what kind of hobbies do you have and I was like oh I'm quite into crochet and they're like oh what do you mean by that and I was like I can show you so I reached into my bag and I pulled out this little red crane crown that I had made named Lucky just for this interview and I can put a picture of of it up around here when I'm editing but I brought out this little thing and I said oh, I don't know maybe I can use it for my classes maybe to introduce them animals or even after school teach them a little bit of crochet and immediately after the interview I was so embarrassed that I had brought this friggin little knitted toy with me but apparently it worked so don't be afraid to gloat, even if you think it's stupid. Be yourself. Be completely honest. This is who I am. I like this kind of stuff. I will be great for this job. Take me. So, <laughs> just, yeah. I think if they see that you are happy, you can cope with these kind of intense situations, then you will be fine. Especially when you first start teaching, it's very stressful. So, if you can handle the interview fine, you'll be great. <laughs> okay, what's next? Alright, so, after you have gone past the interview stage, you will be waiting a really, really, really long time to hear about your placements. So, I didn't hear about my placement until maybe late June, early July. And I was supposed to be leaving at the end of July, so I was super anxious 
for the entire like three or four months just waiting to hear where I'm going but just you know relax they aren't going to forget about you and there's really not a lot you can prepare for beforehand just bring appropriate clothes you're coming into the summer when I got here it was like 40 degrees and something stupid like 80% humidity and I had only packed winter things not smart but anyway I digress so earlier I said that I had applied to teach in elementary school or primary school for us Kiwis, eh? Uh, and I had also wanted to be in Fukushima because I have family that live there and I already kind of knew the town so I was comfortable with navigating around knowing that I had people there. But with my placement I was put in a very small town in the middle of Hyogo Prefecture which is basically smack in the middle of Japan's main island and this town is just teeny tiny by Japan standards but honestly my hometown could fit inside the school that I'm placed in so what are you gonna do and not only was I put way far away from where I'd originally asked in this tiny little town that I had no idea about I was also put in a senior high school not just any senior high school a uh, very advanced top of the class senior high school so I was very surprised and super nervous that I wouldn't be able to connect with these Japanese teenagers because when I thought about teenagers you know back home they're a little bit of a pain so <laughs> but yeah I was pleasantly surprised. The town is beautiful, it's nice and quiet, not too overwhelming, and the students are really dedicated to their work. Even though I'm sure a lot of them hate English, but I can still see them trying to work hard and get all their stuff done, and they still smile in the morning, so they're like little angels. <laughs> But what I'm trying to say is, when you do get your placement and it's not what you ask for, don't be too upset because I think a lot of the places, even if it's in the middle of nowhere or it's a really busy city, something about it is going to surprise you in a great way and you won't regret going there, I'm sure. So yeah, stay positive. You can do it. <laughs> okay, so next on the agenda, once you get your placements and they've all got your tickets and you're on your way over, whether it be a two hour flight, four hour flight, 13 or 20 hour flight from wherever you're from, you are going straight in to Tokyo orientation. So they put you in a nice hotel, which is swell, haha, <laughs> but for a lot of the people I remember they were very, very jet lagged and to be thrown straight into all of these conferences and classes, it was very difficult, especially some of the flights were delayed. So I think I remember one group in particular was scolded for coming into a thing late and they're just like, a, a flight was delayed. Do we just stand outside until you're done? But yeah, it was a pain. But Yeah, so if you didn't notice, I tried to cover up my medic box because I thought it looked ugly and I guess the apartment decided that I'm not allowed on. So the first thing I wanted to let you know, which is something that I got into a lot of trouble for when I came in, uh, if you're from New Zealand or anywhere that does not have particularly strong RTDs, ready to drink beverages, um, beware of the chew high. Okay, so chuhai is a kind of sweet, ready-made drink that they sell in Japan. It's really, really cheap. You can get them for like $1, $2, $3. And you can get 4%, which everyone's like, oh yeah, that's fine. I'm used to 4%. Or you can get 9%. And when I first got here and I saw 9% beverages for like $2 each, I was like, 
I am in heaven. Yes. So I bought a bunch of them. Uh, this is still during the orientation, by the way. And I kind of just, oh, uh, I'd gotten some bad news. So I kind of went a little overboard with the 9% drinks and got very, 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 very hungover for the conference. And it was awful. I couldn't eat. I couldn't listen. I nearly threw up on one of my partners. <laughs> so if you are used to drinking a bit or you have a little bit of a thing, especially if you're from Otago Uni, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you don't. You probably have more self-control than I do. But just be careful, okay? If, if you haven't had 9% drinks in a couple years, because New Zealand said we're not allowed to do 8% anymore, just be careful. That's what I say about vodka and tequila too. <laughs> Watch out. Anyway, the main gist was stay sharp. You're going to be tired from your really long flight over to Japan and getting incredibly drunk or staying up late at night is not going to help you. So probably on the first chance that you get, I would suggest you go out and explore the town as sober as you can and try to find some kombini, convenience stores, get yourself some Red Bull or coffee or whatever helps you get up and go in the morning or even some little hangover drink. But yeah, I did not do a lot of exploring while I was in Tokyo and I regretted it because it wasn't until a year later that I went back to Tokyo and I still didn't explore much. So you might be placed really far or you might be in Tokyo, but either way, it's a good chance to explore while you've got all those other newbies around you. So yeah, get into it. Also, <laughs> try to find an ATM. Hopefully you bought lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of money because it's going to be real tempting to buy a butt ton of stuff and you're going to have to wait an entire month until you can get paid from your job. So if you didn't bring lots of money, you should find an ATM on that first day and get out as much as you can because those ATM fees are gonna get you real bad. So yeah, just find an ATM, get your money, keep a little emergency stash somewhere, and yeah, be smart. Of course you will. You got into the program. You must be smart, right? And that's what I keep telling myself. <sighs> anyway, I think that's everything from me today. So, thanks for listening. Sorry, this is like, I'm not used to talking to the camera. This is my first proper thing, except for the travel thing I did earlier, but yeah. So, thanks so much guys for listening to my rambling for however long I was going for. I never keep track. Uh, I can't promise that I'll put videos up very often because my mood is always a little bit unpredictable. So, right now it's good, so I thought I'd take advantage of that. Hopefully in the next two weeks I can do something else. Because next weekend I'm going to Sapporo and I'm super excited, so I'll try to take lots of photos and stuff and put a little together. Um, I also noticed my little crocheted mudcap and my bird disappeared, so I don't know what happened there. I mean, the, the fan can't... I don't think I knocked them over. I think my apartment's haunted. <laughs> like, honestly, the amount of stuff that falls over without cause is just ridiculous. But anyway, uh, yeah, I guess I'll do the stereotypical give me a thumbs up if you like this video, leave a comment below if you have anything you want to ask me, subscribe if you want to see me again. Probably not, but that's okay. You're here now, and I'm so glad. So, thank you so much. Have a great day. See you later. <laughs> okay, so next on the agenda. The agenda? The agenda. Let's start again. Okay, so next on the agenda. Once you have got your placement and have all got your tickets ready to come over, you're going straight in to orientation. Okay, so... <sighs> oh my god! <laughs> Damn it.